Good morning from Seattle. Good afternoon to the rest of the country. A um, few minutes late today doing these uh, uh, Facebook Lives, <clears throat> uh, basically creating a book on legal blogging by uh, uh, talking with you on uh, Facebook <clears throat> uh, five days a week, uh, one chapter a day. Um, ironically, 45 uh, chapters long, which is a long time. We'll run this all the way to about <clears throat> July 10, July 11. Um, today we're talking about <clears throat> selecting your URL, um, your, your domain name, um, if you will. Yesterday I talked about the title of your blog, <clears throat> you know, make it you know, short, um, you, you know, take into account how it's going to appear in syndication other places. This is just an extension you know, of, <clears throat> of the title of your blog, but now let's focus on the URL. Um, it's, don't be overdramatic about selecting your URL. I think some people are. Some people even go out and <clears throat> say, God, I bought this great domain name uh, four or five, uh, six years ago, or even four months ago. So now I want to start a blog. And it, it, it's absolutely insane. And that's what people used to do. There's some people still sitting on domains that they may have bought 20 years ago because <clears throat> it's the perfect domain. You know, and, and years ago, you got to realize people used to actually key things in. I mean, when I started my you know, first legal tech company, there was no Google. Um, you had to figure out all the misspellings of your name. You know, when you had a company called Prairie Law, like I did, you had to figure out what are the, all the misspellings uh, of the domain name because that's how people were going to find you. Now, they may have found you through some taxonomy, but there was no Google to find you. So the domain name was just <clears throat> critically important. Um, you know, so the things that I'm thinking about are, are you know, and I'll, I'll sketch these out for you and it'll be, we'll get it transcribed and up on YouTube, but one, make it a .com. Don't screw around with .net, .info, that type of stuff. <clears throat> I'll never forget the uh, company that was going to work on uh, rebranding uh, this company, Lexblog, and even was thinking about <clears throat> coming up with a new, new name, even though we were very well known in the industry after five or six years. <clears throat> and they come down, they're going to present the big idea, the marketing people, and we're sitting in a meeting and, and they're pulling down the signs as to what <clears throat> they're thinking the, the name could be. And I'm sitting on my iPhone and I'm realizing somebody's already got the dot com. And uh, I asked them, I mean, they kind of just looked at me in a blank stare, like they, I don't know if they ever look. But, he's, but they said, well, you, we'll just use a .info or a .net. And I'm thinking, if you think I'm going to go out <clears throat> and try to be professional on the .net and the .info, it's not happening. Um, and, you know, let it enough said by just saying they didn't do any more work for us. But you should be running on a .com because it's going to be a publication. You know, so a magazine would run on a .com. It wouldn't run on a .net, .info. Now, if you're... You know, if, if you're an organization, you're running on a .org, and there might be some reasons to go on subdomains for different things related to that, you know, that's a whole other thing. But put it on a, put it on a .com. Um, it should be short. You don't have to have something, you know, dramatically long. You know, and it doesn't have to be the perfect match to the title. Maybe there'll be an abbreviation in it. Who, who knows? Um, but try to make it relatively short because you're, you might want to use it in other places, like in a SIG line. Um, you might not just have a link from what you're describing, but you might actually have the URL. It might be displayed you know, other places as well. <clears throat> Pretty unlikely that people are going to be putting in your full domain name into, you know, when they're going directly to your site or direct. Um, but keep it short non nonetheless. <clears throat> Don't be clever. You know, this is not the time to come up with some clever name that you've thought of uh, uh, that you think is really cool. Because for every person that thinks it's cool like you, there's about 80 other people that are going to think it's kind of lame and not so cool or that you're too cool. Um, you know, you're trying to just look glib. You don't have to do that, that sort of thing. So I would keep it pretty direct. Think of the name of your publication. Now you're going to carry that up into a domain field. And I would start before the, get that title done before you go to the URL, not vice, not vice versa. Um, and you, you're, you're going to have it in sync with that title. And like I talked about yesterday in the title, you know, you know, the exact things for Google aren't as important as they, they used to be, although they are. I believe they're still important. So I would like to have them in sync, the domain name and the, and the title, so that if somebody's looking at it, they don't think you're trying to game thing. Now, people could point to me and say, well, Kevin, you know, a lot to be learned from you. Your blog is on running on kevin.laxblog.com. Well, it's been running on that since 2003. Now, back in 2003, there was this school of thought <clears throat> that Google was looking at certain things or not looking at things. But you, you've got to realize that was only about two years after people started to use Google in mass. Um, 
<clears throat> so, you know, I'm, I'm staying with what, what brought me as opposed to moving over to something else. When we talked about it as a company, moving it over to real lawyers and that type of stuff, you know, I asked folks, is there any chance, the remotest possibility that would hurt in search? <clears throat> you know, n nobody can guarantee anything. Um, so I just stayed with Kevin. Um, uh, I stayed with Kevin.lexbog.com and it, it hasn't hurt me any. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to rank for just general searches. I'm not looking for, <clears throat> You know, you know, legal blog, law blog, law firm blog, all those type of things. You know, I was when I started the company, and I used to even chart the, the search results. <clears throat> but I found over time we generate a lot of business by just our name and our reputation. So I'm not too worried about every last thing in, in, in that concern. Um, <clears throat> subdomains. Um, <clears throat> you know, I. You know, there's probably a lot of people that, that, there's a lot of people, I already know that, that know a lot more than I do about search engine optimization <clears throat> and, and those type of things because their business is more focused on how do I get more traffic coming to that lawyer's site because they're not necessarily getting their work based on reputation, they're getting their work based on how many people that I can get to drive by their business and see the, see the, see the website. <clears throat> Lawyer may still be very good, but they've got to get people to come in that way than coming in by, by word of mouth and reputation um, alone. So they're gonna know more than I do. <clears throat> now, my take on, on subdomains is it's probably not going to matter a big, if, if I'm talking to somebody on their blog, <clears throat> not going to matter significantly uh, either way. Um, <clears throat> now, it used to be, um, I mean, I can remember a time when I used to ask the, the large firms, they were thinking about, <clears throat> should we have blogs or should we not have blogs? And the, so the, the, some of the business development people and the marketing people knew that blogs were going to be a big deal, but nobody was doing them. So their web development companies weren't doing blogs. Nobody was doing blogs. I mean, this is, you know, 10 plus years ago. People thought, you know, 15 years ago, there were a lot of people that are selling blogs and right now to law firms that were running ads that, that blogs were stupid. Really, legal blogs. This is dumb. It's not a good use of lawyers' time. It could even be unethical um, type of thing. So I used to ask them, would you like to make a big splash with the SEO performance of a blog. Would that help you get credibility inside your firm for getting more lawyers to use blogs to develop business because they believed that it would and it did. So if I put on a, on a firm site something like business bankruptcy or California business bankruptcy on a site which already had three or 4,000 pages because it was a large firm, it could be number one in Google for business bankruptcy in California the next day, the next day. Um, so the results were, were dramatic back then because what you were doing was you were riding on that other site. Then there was a period of time when, <clears throat> when the subdomain could be one site and the other site, you know, the, the main site the firm has could be listed as another site. <clears throat> you know, those things have changed a lot where Google's not going to allow you to game things like they may have game things. You may have been able to game things years ago, and I'm sure there's still, still way people to do. Um, some firms like to do it just for consistency in the way that they run. Fox Rothschild has about 35, 40 blogs. <clears throat> They're all running on, on subdomains, and they ultimately made the decision that's just the look that they wanted. So if somebody was doing a particular blog on a particular subject, they run it on, on the name dot uh, Fox Russia. You don't have to worry about uh, about the uh, <clears throat> the domain names then, because you're running all on the on the firm site. Now, one of the things you have to worry about big time is ownership. Who owns this thing? Um, you know, because lawyers come and go. Um, lawyers can go to another firm. Do you own your domain name? Can you take your blog? <clears throat> Firms aren't real big on lawyers planning to leave when they get there. Um, and, but it is something you want to take into account if you're an individual lawyer and you're going to be doing your blog because, okay, who owns this thing? You know, because you're, if you're a partner, you know, your partnership agreement is saying that any and all things created by the partners while they're at the partnership are owned by the partnership and not the individual lawyer. If it's a corporation, as many firms uh, are, then it's going to say under the, under the shareholders agreement uh, and under the bylaws that that anything that's created by any employees while they're here is owned by the corporation. So it's not owned by the individual lawyer. So 
you, not arguably, you get a pretty good chance that the firm's going to take a position that they own it. Now, I have talked to lawyers in this area of creations, and there's also a compelling case, no matter what those bylaws say, or no matter what the partnership agreement says, that, that a lawyer could take the blog with him. The problem with it is it can get, you know, you can get, you know, like this. When you're trying to get your files out of a firm and you're trying to get your blog out of the firm, you're probably going to have to pay money to get the thing settled, and that's something that lawyers do. And they might pay X amount of money so they don't have to worry about taking their blog with, it, with them when they want to go. Some firms are going to say, we don't want to maintain it. We would like to get it away from the firm as fast as possible. While you have some firms that are petty. They would rather have you go without the blog, and they'll just turn it off. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, so it can be all over the board. But with your domain name, if you own it, that's a pretty big thing. Now, if you bought it while you're at the firm, then maybe you bought it on behalf of the firm, arguably. If you bought it on your own and you brought it in, maybe you own it. Maybe the works that you've created on the blog now aren't even you got lot, aren't, aren't owned by you. A lot of issues. Um, but I'd be thinking about the ownership of the URL. In most firms, large firms, it's not going to be an issue. I mean, the firm is going to buy the URL. They're going to own it. And there's benefits to lawyers being in a large firm, so you're not looking to create any issues um, by planning on leaving at some point ahead. There's a lot of advantages that you get al already. Um, you know, those are the real issues on the URL. I don't think it's as big a deal as, p as people think it is. I'm sure some people would say, well, no, Kevin, you missed 18 points um, that you should have relating to search. But you know, I'd be thinking of the .com, keeping it short, don't be clever. Um, have it in sync with the title of your blog. So if it's, you know, California defamation um, law, you know, blog, then your title is going to be CaliforniaDefamation.com or CAdefamation.com. You just search till you find it. You know, some people will tell you all the domains have gone are gone because the internet's been around, you know, for 25 years. I'm not so convinced that it is. Every time that I've tried to find something. Um, I've been able to find you know, something pretty close to it, um, or it, and some points just right on, on point. And quite frankly, you know, by the time you add the term blog, I mean, there aren't, as, as much as people think that everything is being covered in blogs, it isn't even 2% of what could be covered in the law. It isn't even 1% of what should be covered in the law by blogs that's in blogs. So you've got all those domains out there. You know, if you're searching for you know, California family law, blog, yeah, it's probably going to be gone. Um, um, and uh, there's going to be a lot of blogs titled Lawyer's Blog, California Family Lawyer's Blog. I've never been a big fan of that. If you're out for search, maybe there's some advantage uh, to that. But then it looks like it's about you as opposed to about helping people because the blog is not about lawyers. It's about information relating to family law uh, lawyers. As far as the, the uh, subdomains, it, it, you know, that's six half dozen or another. I mean, I don't know that it's as big a deal as people uh, think, think it is um, one way or the other. Ownership is, is an issue that you want to be thinking about because you want to be thinking about who owns the blog and who owns the domain name. So you have that in sync uh, beforehand. The last thing I want to mention that I've been mentioning every day is, is, is blog for good. And uh, you're going to start to see this domain name around the internet. And what blog for good is, it's, it's a campaign um, that uh, Lexblog uh, is doing with various bar associations across the country. We're empowering lawyers to be able to help people uh, for legal issues arising out of the pandemic. And this is relating to consumers, um, small business people, corporations, in-house counsel, government agencies, so many, so, so many issues arising out of the uh, pandemic. And it's a great opportunity for lawyers that care to use some of their time to be able to share what they know, to think of, it could be little niche issues. It might be, <clears throat> gee, workers' compensation uh, claims for healthcare workers because uh, on COVID, or the, the, pandem the virus, because there, there's nurses and there's doctors and there are EMTs that are, that, are, that are getting the virus because they're working and they're helping people. Well, what are the issues that relate to them that make it unique? What happens if they want to go home, or that their their spouse looks it up, so their, you know, so that their husband looks it up, you know, information for his wife, it's a doctor, or a nurse, or EMT, to to tell her what her rights may be vis-a-vis a -vis claim in this issue, and that some lawyer in our state was nice enough, nice enough, to spend maybe a half hour, hour a day, to do this and create this for the people of our state. 
and they can put that up on a blog. <clears throat> and if they're in an association that is working with Lexbox, the blog's free. And it's a very nice blog, identical to the one that I have. Contact us and we, we get it up. Um, and where we're going to each state um, that isn't already in uh, the campaign, Blog for Good, and we're working with them because we've already aggregated their content by state. So we've created a portal, on a, you know, a portal product uh, similar to what you know, <clears throat> Illinois has and Arizona has. And New York City just launched one um, for the Bar Association there because of the pandemic. It's got a great response uh, from lawyers that want to participate. So what we're doing is going state by state with already created portals or aggregations of content so that, that you know, when I chat with them, I mean, this afternoon I'm chatting with Florida, you know, one of the top four states. And I'll show them, you know, here is a site that is already built for you to shine a light on the lawyers that are helping people in Florida. And that's blogs that, that are on our network already that we can showcase to them to say, here's what you've got. And once you announce to the lawyers in, in Florida that they have the opportunity to participate, many of them already have blogs, boom, they will automatically drop into here, into your publication. Most of the content is all going to be around the virus and the pandemic because that's what lawyers are creating. <clears throat> and then just let the other people know that if they want to start to cover niche subjects and we'll help them identify niches, we'll help them create FAQs so that it's easy for them to do things as opposed to write long blog content, we'll get that to them for free. Um, and so, you know, if you're out there and you, you want to get to be part of the campaign, let us know. And there's nothing more exciting for my team than, than working on this project that we've only been working on for the last about two or three, two or three weeks. And what we're seeing now is that my team being capable enough of getting, getting done five, six um, uh, you know, sites done a week so that as they come up, then we go out and we contact the bar associations and say, here's your site. Are you ready to go? Um, and uh, in our site, in the, in the publishing section of, of Lexbog, you'll see it all laid out a, a campaign. Or if you just search blog for good on my blog, you'll find it. But you'll see map laid out by states that are participating. And then those states whose sites are done and they're not being run by the bar associations yet, that will contact the bars. And then you'll see those sites, those states that we haven't created the, uh, the sites yet. But I, I think it's a great opportunity for, for lawyers to make a difference. Thank you much and have a great day.